Acts chapter 9. Conversion of Saul. Meanwhile, Saul continued to threaten the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, even threatening to kill them. Next, he proceeded to the supreme priest, and he requested letters from him to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he should meet any groups of believers who followed the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ, whether men or women, he might arrest them and send them back to the city of Jerusalem. As Saul was approaching Damascus, suddenly a heavenly light dazzled around him. Overpowered, he fell right on the ground. And next, he heard someone speaking to him, Saul, Saul, why are you ill-treating me? And Saul replied, asking, Who are you, mighty Lord? The voice answered, I am Jesus Christ, whom you are ill-treating. Nevertheless, arise and enter the city, and there you will be informed about everything you must do. Saul's companions who journeyed with him were dumbfounded and speechless. They heard the voice of the Lord, but did not see anyone. Then Saul arose from the plain ground, and opening his eyes, he did not see anybody. So his companions held his hands and led him into the city of Damascus. For three days he was completely sightless and did not eat any food or drink anything. Now in the city of Damascus there was a believer called Ananias. Ananias had a vision from the Lord and in the vision the Lord called him Ananias and he replied here am I almighty Lord and the Lord told him arise and go to go to straight street and in the residence of Judas ask the people for certain person from Tarsus called Saul he is currently praying And in a vision from the Lord, he has seen a holy man of God called Ananias approaching him to lay hands on him and bless him that he might recover and regain his sight. At that point, Ananias replied, Lord, many people have informed me concerning this person and all the atrocities he has done to your faithful people in the holy city of Jerusalem. And he has entered the city of Damascus with all authority and power from the leading priest to arrest even believer, even uh, every believer he finds venerating you. But the Lord told Ananias, go, for I have already selected him to venerate and serve me, to proclaim my name before Gentiles and monarchs and the entire nation Israel. And I personally will show him every suffering he must endure for my sake. So Ananias left and later arrived at the residence where Saul stayed. And he entered the place. Meeting Saul, Ananias laid his hands on him and said, Saul, my brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, having appeared to you on the way while you were traveling, ordered me to come to you, that you may regain your sight and receive the Holy Spirit. And suddenly, something fell from Saul's eyes. The things were like scales, fish scales. And Saul regained his sight. He got up and received baptism. He ate some food and regained his strength. Saul remained for some days with the community of believers in Damascus. He proceeded directly to the, synagogue and, to the synagogues and started to address the people telling everybody that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Now everyone who heard Saul was astonished, asking, Is this not the very Saul who killed believers for invoking the, this name in the holy city of Jerusalem? And has come to this place precisely for that objective. 
to arrest believers and take them shackled to the living priests. But Saul only became stronger and more courageous. He confounded the Jews who lived in the city of Damascus, establishing clearly that this Jesus is the Christ. And so, after many days had passed, the Jewish authorities were scheming to kill Saul. But Saul was informed about their evil scheme, and, and they kept watch every day and every night at the gates looking for a good opportunity to kill him. But one night, the companions of Saul carried him and slowly let him drop alongside a wall in a huge basket. When Saul arrived in the holy city of Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples of Jesus Christ, but all the disciples were frightened of him and would not believe that he was a disciple of Jesus Christ. At that point, Barnabas came and assisted Saul. He took Saul to the disciples of Christ and addressed the group regarding how Saul had encountered the Lord Jesus Christ on the way to Damascus. And that the Lord Jesus had addressed him. He also informed the apostles how courageously and zealously Saul had addressed the congregations in the holy name of Jesus Christ while in Damascus. So, Saul remained with the disciples of Christ and went throughout the city of Jerusalem, preaching quite courageously and zealously in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Saul also conversed and argued with the Hellenists, Jews who speak Greek, and they attempted to fatally attack him. But when the congregation of believers knew this, they protected Saul and took him to Caesarea, later sending him off to Tarsus. At that point, the congregations of believers everywhere on the lands of Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a period of peace and progress. And powered by the Holy Spirit, the communities flourished, increasing in population and strength. And everyone walked in the fear of the Lord. As events happened, Peter traveled all over, the, uh, all over the place and once proceeded to visit the people of God resident in Lydda. There, Peter encountered one man called Aeneas, who was a paralytic, bedridden for eight straight years. And then Peter told him, Aeneas, you are healed by Jesus himself, the Christ. Arise, dress your bed and go. And Aeneas got up at once. Everybody who was resident in Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they all turned to God. Next, in Joppa, there was a holy there was a lady whose name was Tabitha. Tabitha is translated Dorcas in Greek and means a, a deer in English. She was a believer full of kind charitable and meritorious deeds. But as events happened in those days, she became sick, infirm, and expired. They bathed her body and placed it in a chamber upstairs. Since Lida and Joppa were not very far apart, when the faithful in Joppa were informed that Peter was in Lida, they dispatched two envoys to him, appealing to him to endeavor to come to them without delay. Peter prepared and left with and left with them. Reaching their destination, Peter was taken to the chamber upstairs, and an assembly of widows thronged the area around him, weeping and showing him various coats and garments Dorcas had created while she lived before her illness and expiration. Peter had all everybody exit the chamber, and he knelt down and entreated the Almighty Lord. And turning to the cops, he said, Tabitha, arise. And Tabitha opened her eyes. And seeing Peter, she was strengthened and sat up. Peter assisted her and she got up. Then he invited, he invited all the faithful and all the widows. 
and he presented Tabitha alive to them. And the glad tidings spread everywhere throughout Joppa, and a multitude believed in the Almighty Lord. Peter remained many days in Joppa with a leather tanner whose name was Simon. <laughs>